Assalamu alaikum. Hope you are doing well. Today we are going to learn about the bacterial toxins. You know bacteria have two types of toxins. One is the exotoxin and another one is the endotoxin. So one by one we will learn in details about each and everything uh, we need to know about these toxins. So today actually we will learn about the properties, secretion, mechanism of action and classification of exotoxin and endotoxin. So first of all, uh, before we go to the details of exotoxin and endotoxin, what is actually the toxin? You know, bacteria exert its effect by two mechanisms. First is inflammation and infl invasion and the second one is toxin. So this toxin is actually the antigenic or the substance by which the bacteria exerts its effect. So toxins uh, are of two types basically first one is exotoxin and second one is endotoxin and exotoxin is actually readily secreted from the bacteria whereas the endotoxin is actually the integral part of the bacterial membrane and to be released the bacteria have to be lysed uh, for endotoxin okay and you know these toxins have various damaging and deleterious effect on the host cell and they cause the pathogenic effects directly on the target cell as well as by interacting with the immune system to release cytokines. Now the details of uh, exotoxin. Don't remember the whole thing, just remember the thing which is uh, circled in this picture. The first thing is bacteria. Bacterial exotoxin is actually a protein in nature and they are highly fatal and they are actually actively secreted by both gram positive and gram negative bacteria in contrast to endotoxin which is actually secreted by only gram-negative bacteria okay and they are encoded by plasmid or bacteriophage so these are the kind of properties of the bacteria uh, bacterial endotoxin so what are the other properties I told you that bacterial exotoxin are actually readily secreted from the bacterial cell and they are secreted by a system which is actually termed as secretion system so basically there are six types of secretion system uh, which secretes bacterial exotoxin into the extracellular space and from extracellular space the toxins from the blood or from the extracellular material goes to the uh, host cells of the of the human body or any kind of host cells on which the bacteria act so there is another type of mechanism the secretion three system uh, also called the uh, injectosome which is directly secrete the bacterial ex exotoxin into the host cell and exerts its effect and you know as this injectosome is secreting its bacterial products directly into the host cells so there will be no antibody activity and the uh, effect of exotoxin will be the maximum okay so I'll discuss it in details later but for now just know that there is some secretion system which helps in secretion of the bacterial exotoxin. Now the coding genes of these bacterial exotoxins are actually located on the plasmid or the lysogenic bacterial viruses, I mean the bacteriophages. And some important exotoxins are encoded by bacteriophages like uh, diphtheria toxin, cholera toxin, botulinum toxin. These are all which are encoded by the bacteriophages. Okay? Now I told you in the definition that bacterial exotoxin is actually highly toxic and you know uh, for example tyrannous toxin its fatal dose is less than one microgram can you imagine less than one microgram so it is highly fatal and exotoxins are actually the most toxic substance ever known on earth and good antigens and uh, induced synthesis of productive antibodies and there are some antigens uh, antigens that induce synthesis of protective antibodies called uh, antitoxin and this antitoxin actually prevent and treat the disease such as proteolism and tyrannous toxin and if you treat the exotoxin with formaldehyde or uh, acid or heat uh, toxoid is produced and you know toxoid is uh, used in production of vaccines which is termed as toxoid vaccine like tyrannous toxoid diphtheria toxoid vaccine I think you already know it. Uh, now, some exotoxins have AB subunit in their structure, 
uh, there are two subunits one is a subunit which is termed as active subunit and the pathogenicity of the bacteria or uh, bacterial endotoxin is ex exotoxin is actually exerted by this a subunit which have the catalytic domain and the b subunit is actually the binding subunit which binds to a specific receptor and the specificity of a bacterial exotoxin is uh, determined by this b subunit and you know bacterial exotoxins are mainly heat labile they destroyed they are destroyed rapidly at cystic resources except staphylococcal enterotoxin which need higher temperature to be destroyed now mechanism of secretion i have already told you there is a secretion system basically six types and a special type called the uh, endosome i mean the insectosome uh, which is also termed as molecular sharing for example let's suppose let me draw a picture here okay so let's suppose this is the bacteria okay okay so let's suppose this is the bacteria and this is the host cell okay so bacteria releases its uh, exotoxin by two ways one they release readily into the extracellular space and from the extracellular space these exotoxins goes inside the host cell this is one mechanism and i told you there is another mechanism called the injectosome so by injectosome mechanism what this bacteria does it produces a tube-like structure which is termed as molecular sheet or needle like projection and through this projection it releases its endotoxin directly into the uh, into exotoxin directly into the host cells so it is not secreted in the outside so there is no antibody effect on this uh, exotoxin so it will produce its maximum effect like pseudomonas aeruginosa shigella and salmonella species then escherichia coli and yersinia pestis uh, release their exotoxin by this mechanism the insectosome or type 3 secretion mechanism now classification now classification can be done based on two type, uh, based on two things one is the side of action another one is the mode of action according to the mode of action or the mechanism of action bacteria exotoxin can be divided into three types one is the adp ribosylation system that act by inhibiting protein synthesis or damage the cell membrane there is another type which is called uh, the membrane disrupting toxins and the third one is super antigen so actually we will dis discuss it in details later so just for now let me go back into the sorry okay now let me go back into the classification okay so three types according to the mechanism of action and on the side according to the side of action you can divide it into various types like cytotoxin which act on the cell then neurotoxin which act mainly on the uh, neuro i mean the nervous system and enterotoxin as well which act on the gut then cutaneous exotoxin act on the skin like staphylococcus and then pyrogenic exotoxin which induces people uh, which act by super antigen mechanism and there are some special uh, exotoxin as well like anthrax toxin diphtheria toxin okay now uh, actually these are some important bacterial enterotoxins with their mode of action so for now i am skip skipping it because you know it is directly taken from the lens review 16 edition so you just open the book and go read from there some skipping it because if i tell, he, tell you here it will be a very lengthy video so let's skip it now mechanism of action i told you in a previous slide that mechanism is actual mechanism of action of exotoxin is actually three types one is a ribosylation or ribosub unit system the second one is membrane disrupting toxins and there is another mechanism called the super antigen system and these are some example of uh, bacteria which act by this three mechanism like adp ribosylation diphtheria toxin cholera toxin escherichia coli heat level toxin is act by the adp ribosylation and there is toxic shock syndrome toxins staphylococcal enterotoxin erythrogenic toxin which act by super antigen and there are uh, there are trinitinous uh, uh, toxin botulinum toxin which act by protease which are actually neurotoxin and lecithin is from the clostridium parfum ninja cell in the disrupting of the membrane 
So AB subunit have already told you that there are some bacteria who is have AB subunit in their structure. The A subunit is the active subunit and B subunit is the binding subunit. Uh, B subunit is actually determine the specificity of the bacterial endo, uh, endo exotoxin. Now, what is the mechanism by who is this bacterial exotoxin or AB subunit enter into the cell of the host and cause its destructive effect? Actually, the A subunit of the bacteria has a domain called the catalytic or C domain. On the other hand, the B subunit or the binding subunit of the exotoxin has two domain. One is the T domain or called the translocation or transmembrane domain. And, th and the second one is the R domain which is also termed as receptor binding domain. And the host cells have toxin receptor associated protein like in diphtheria toxin. There is DTROP27 for diphtheria. Uh, and heparin binding ECF factor, ECF receptor. And whenever exotoxins come, this toxin receptor associated protein like DTRA bind with the uh, heparin binding ECF like receptor, and the receptor on the host cells get activated. And then your exotoxin identify or can recognize this receptor and binds on it by the B subunit. So, this is the mechanism actually. This is the d trap molecule or the receptor binding protein complex and this one is actually the receptor. Whenever the exotoxin is produced, this d trap binds with the receptor and the receptor gets activated. When this receptor gets activated, the exotoxins bind on the uh, receptor and recognize it. Okay, so this is this black one is actually the, uh, the naughty A subunit. And this red one, the happy one, is actually the binding subunit. It is actually happy and looking like it is very happy and very innocent guy. But it actually helps in uh, the pathogenesis or the destructive process by a subunit. So actually, it is also it is also, it is also uh, actually a culprit. Now, how this entrance to the cell occur? I told you that whenever the DTRA binds with the receptor, the receptor gets activated and the exotoxin recognizes it and binds with the receptor. Then what happens is, after binding of exotoxin to the receptor, clathrin mediated endocytosis occurs. So by clathrin mediated endocytosis, for example, let's suppose this, this one is the host cell wall. When, when receptor, receptor, uh, receptor and exotoxin complex are here, the clatin mediated endocytosis of it occurs and it actually goes into the cell and becomes an endosome with the catalytic domain and receptor uh, exotoxin complex inside the endosome okay and there is a special proton pump on the wall of this endosome which is termed as uh, vacular vacular proton ATPS pump or VATPS pump which allows the proton to enter inside the cell inside inside the endosome so when the proton enters inside the endosome the pH of the endosome gets lowered which is termed as acidification and due to acidification the D domain gets spontaneously re reorganized and it inserts in the endosomal membrane forming a pore. So whenever the acidification of the endosome when the acidification of endosome occurs the the T domain from the B subunit you know B subunit has two domain this T domain gets a gets uh, separated from it and form a pore in the endosomal membrane and through this pore the catalytic subunit i mean this one goes outside of the endosome into the cytoplasm so i'm showing you a picture right now okay this one so you can see that this one is the heterotoxin and this one is the d trap and receptor whenever this come to the d trap uh, the it is a target activated and exotoxin bind on it and this red one is actually the catalytic domain this green one is actually the translocation domain and the uh, uh, yellow one is actually the binding domain or the receptor domain okay so you can see the there is clactin mediated endocytosis occurring and there is endosome formation and this one is actually the VAT based pump where the proton enters into the cell acidification causes the green one or the translocation domain of the B subunit to get inserted into the cell membrane and from it 
the catalytic domain of the A domain comes out of the cell and now this catalytic domain will cause its effect on the host cell so this escape of catalytic domain of A subunit from the endosome is also mediated by uh, carbon complex as well as HP, HSP 90 molecule okay so after the C domain uh, come into the cerebral domain gets activated uh, it catalyzes the ADP type of solution of uh, elongation factor 2 or Z stimulator or Z inhibitory protein takes out his action and the B subunit and the receptor uh, from the pro after after releasing the A subunit or catalytic domain of A subunit from the uh, endosome it again go to exocytosis pathway and get released from the cell host cell okay now after this catalytic domain enters the cytoplasm from the endosome and the other products of endosome gets released from the host cell by exocytosis process this catalytic domain now will cause its effects inside the inside the host cell so this can act by either of the three ways one is the inhibition of uh, inhibition of protein synthesis the second one is uh, second messenger pathway and the third one is inhibition of release of neurotransmitter so the exotoxins that exert their effect or the catalytic domain that exert their effect by by inhibiting protein synthesis or exotoxins of diphtheria pseudomonas endotoxin pseudomonas exotoxin a pseudomonas exotoxin a then verotoxin producing a sharikia cola shiga toxin of uh, shigera so these are all things so diphtheria toxin of pseudomonas exotoxin a after entrance into the host cell uh, cytoplasm of the host cell the a subunit uh, uh, the a subunit catalyzes the addition of elongation factor 2 with the adp ribose from nad and this actually causes inhibition of protein synthesis and actually which leads to the cell death you know the nad component nad plus have three things in it one is the nicotinamide one is the adp and another one is the ribose sugar so by the help of subunit a of bacterial exotoxin this elongation factor 2 or ef2 gets bind with the adp and ribose of the nad plus and the nicotinamide uh, is byproduct in this reaction so that is how the inhibition of protein synthesis occurs in diphtheria uh, diphtheria exotoxin you can see here that after binding it released from the endosome into the cytoplasm inactivates the elongation factor 2 by binding with the adp ribose and then prevent protein synthesis and ultimately lead to cell death okay now escherichia coli escherichia coli and shigella endotoxin but, but first i go into details of this mechanism uh, i want to ensure one thing that you know about the eukaryotic cell uh, eukaryotic cells uh, you know the ribosome you know the ribosome in eukaryotic cell is com or ats and it can be divided into two subunits the 60s and 4s 40s so 40s is again composed of 18s rrna and the 60s is composed of three types of rrna 5.8s 28s and 5s so this three rrna comp uh, consi uh, i mean make up the 60s subunit of the ribosome and 40s subunit of the ribosome is made up of the 18s rrna so what shiga toxin does is shiga toxin uh, enters inside the cell enters inside the cell by binding the b subunit with the zb3 expressed by the eukaryotic cell and after binding to the zb3 it go by it enters into the cell by retrograde transport first internalized by the Golgi apparatus and then transfers to the endoplasm reticulum okay so after it goes to the cytoplasm it it causes the cleavage of adenine nucleobase uh, from 28s rRNA of 60s subunit of ribosome 
and detailist deletion of adenine base from the 20s rna the 20s rna get inactivated and ultimately it leads to inactivation of the ribosome and halting halt the protein synthesis which led to the cell death so that is how the shiga toxin and the Escherichia coli virotoxin and enterotoxin works here first bind to the zb3 then internalized by the retrograde transport and from releasing pro releasing to the cytoplasm it causes the deletion of or cleavage of uh, adenine base from the 20s rna which causes the 20s rna to get active inactivated and thus hold the protein synthesis and cell death occurs so this is the same mechanism shown here this is the shiga toxin enters by gb3 into transcolgin network and then it was reticulum then from the 20s rRNA it clips the adenine nucleobase which caused the inhibition of protein synthesis and ultimately it to cell death this is the same mechanism again shown in a different picture you can see this is the gb3 then endosome formation transcolgin network then neuron reticulum then subunit come outside which causes the inhibition of protein synthesis by relating the adenine nucleobase from the 20s rRNA of 60s subunit of 80s ribosome of eukaryotic cell the same mechanism is again shown here so i'm skipping it now the second mechanism the second mechanism by which the ab subunit exotoxin exerts its effect is by second messenger pathway and Enterotoxin like Escherichia coli, Vibrio cholerae, and exotoxins of Bordetella pertussis, Salmonella bacillus, Sirius is all toxins exert that uh, effect by the second messenger pathway. So first of all, we'll uh, discuss in details about the cholera toxin and heat labile uh, Escherichia coli toxin. Okay, so cholera toxin and Escherichia coli toxin binds uh, by the B subunit on the receptor called GM. GM gangliosides, GM1 gangliosides in the surface of the target cell, and the entire, uh, you know, the exotoxin receptor complex is then internalized by the clatin mediated endocytosis, and the endosome is transported to the endoplasmic reticulum directly or by retrograde transfusion to the Golgi apparatus. And you know, there is a special type of channel in the endosomal membrane, I mean, the endoplasmic reticular membrane, which is termed as 661 channel, and through this channel, the A subunit comes out into the cytoplasm of the host cells. Then this A subunit binds, uh, uh, causes the ADP ribosylation of G stimulatory protein of the uh, inside the cell. Before I go into the mechanism of what happens after this A subunit causes the ADP ribosylation of G stimulatory protein, I am going to tell you the normal process or the physiological process what happens in the G-stimulatory protein. So first of all you know that uh, there is a receptor on the cell for the hormone or any kind of ligand and there is a system in our body which is called Z-protein coupling receptor. So this Z-protein has three subunit on it. One is alpha subunit, one is beta subunit and another one is gamma subunit. So with the alpha subunit there is a GDP bind to it and whenever this GDP converts into GDP the alpha subunit gets activated and this alpha sub, uh, subunit then activates the protein adenylate cyclase which is then activate the protein kinase and which exert its effect so first of all there is there is a receptor whenever a ligand this red one is a ligand comes to the receptor this Z protein binds to the receptor and there is formation of GTP from this GDP and this A subunit gets separated from the alpha and beta and gamma subunit and this alpha subunit will now cause the activation of adenyl adenylate cyclase adenylate cyclase on the cell membrane and it will cause the production of cyclic AMP from ATP uh, from ATP inside the cell and you know this alpha subunit have also the GTPS activity as well. So, when the cyclic AMP is producing from the ATP, this GTPS will cause uh, the cleaving or breakdown of GTP into GDP and inorganic phosphate. 
so when this gtp of alpha subunit is broken down into gtp and inorganic phosphate the alpha 7 unit gets inactivated again so when this alpha 7 unit gets inactivated again it's again comes to the beta and gamma subunit and again go to the step one of this process this one okay so there are actually seven steps first normally there is uh, receptor on the surface for g protein coupling receptor for g protein coupling system and c protein has three parts the alpha beta and gamma part whenever a ligand bind on the receptor the alpha beta and gamma part or the g protein as a whole come to the receptor and in the alpha subunit of the g protein there is a ctp and there is ctps activity in the alpha subunit as well so whenever the ligand binds with the g protein or the receptor the g protein gets activated and what happens is the gdp of the alpha subunit is converted into gtp and the alpha subunits get activated now this alpha subunit will come uh, and separate get separated with the beta and gamma subunit and it binds with the adenylate cyclase on the cell membrane now adenylate cyclase uh, will cause the breakdown of uh, atp into cyclic amp and gradually the cyclic amp concentration inside the cell will increase and ultimately there is a time will come uh, when when this uh, gtp on the adenylate cyclase will be gtp on the alpha subunit will be broken down into GT, gdp and inorganic phosphate again by the by the gtps activity of the alpha subunit and this will cause inactivation of the process again but in pathologic process what happens is when the adp ribosylation of g stimulatory protein occurs the gtps activity the gtps activity of the alpha subunit is halted or is arrested for some time and that that is why the adenylate cy adenylate cyclase works for a long duration of time and there is huge and huge amount production of cyclic amp and the cyclic amp in turn uh, stimulate the adin uh, protein kinase a and this protein kinase a will cause the activation of various ion channels on the gut wall uh, on the enterocyte which is maybe uh, especially the uh, cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator which allows the chloride ion to move outside and also leads to secretion of water then sodium and potassium as well as bicarbonate inside the luminal lumen in the same time what this protein kinase a does is uh, it causes the sodium sodium proton antibody system to block and there is no entrance of sodium inside the cell or there is no uh, proton goes outside from the cell so this effect combinedly causes the excretion of huge amount of uh, water then sodium and electrolytes like potassium sodium and bicarbonate then chloride goes outside of the body which is termed as diarrhea so that is how the enterotoxin of escherichia coli causes this this type of diarrhea okay i think it's clear to you now this is a picture showing the same mechanism uh, when the enterotoxin binds to the receptor it internalized by the endosome forming uh, clotting mediated endocytosis it goes to the Golgi apparatus to get transmission or directly into the cytoplasmic membrane and from the cytoplasmic membrane by the 661 channel the a subunit comes out into the cytoplasm and it causes the adp ribosylation of the stimulatory protein and it causes the activation of adenylate cycles and which activates the which causes the breakdown of between the cyclic mp and cyclic mp in turn activate the protein kinase which causes the activation of some ion channels example cftr or cystic fibrosis transmembrane receptor uh, to activate and sodium hydrogen antipod to block which causes release of huge amount of electrolytes and water into the intestinal lumen from the enterocyte causing the diarrhea the same mechanism is shown here so um, i am skipping it now pertussis toxin so pertussis toxin is also uh, act by the second messenger pathway system by z protein but it is slightly different from the 
uh, stimulatory protein because in this case the pertussis toxin activate the C inhibitory protein so the mechanism is same first there is endocytosis and endosome formation and then the s unit comes to the cytosol and this s unit catalyzes the adp ribosylation of uh, alpha inhibitory subunit of the header hetero trimeric g1 protein and inactivates it so inactivation of the g proteins causes the g inhibitory subunits remain locked in their gdp bound inactive state and which causes the adrenaline cyclase activity because normally this inhibitory protein suppresses the action of adrenaline cyclase activity so whenever this protein gets blocked the adenylate cyclase activity will be increased and adenylate cyclase will cause the breakdown of ATP into cyclic MP and this cyclic MP in turn causes the biological signaling or the symptoms of the pertussis toxin and this is a big session the same thing endosome formation then the A subunit goes out from the Golgi network endoplasm from tra retrograde transport or directly into the endoplasm reticulum then A subunit comes out and exerts the effect that is the ADP ribosylation of G stimulus the inhibitory protein and uh, the suppletory action of the G inhibitory protein on the adenylate cyclase is blocked now ATP is converted into cyclic MP by the action of adenylate cyclase which in turn activates the protein kinase and which causes the cellular effects of part of this toxin Now these are some uh, example which causes intercellular cyclic AMP to raise or act by the second messenger pathway system like Vibrio cholerae, Sharikia coli, Borrelia pertussis, Bacillus, Anthracis. Uh, as I have already discussed it, so I'm not going to this slide. Let's skip it. Now the third mechanism by which the ADB subunit axis blockage of neurotransmitter. And there are two mechanisms uh, actually one is for tetanus toxi toxin and another one is for botulinum toxin but the two mechanisms are kind of saying except the thing that the tetanus toxin inhibit the function of inhibitory neurotransmitter on the other hand the botulinum toxin inhibit the function of the excitatory neuron okay so let's just start i'll discuss one and the second one is exactly the same thing but a slight difference is there i will tell you but i will know you know i will i will not go into the details of both things it will be a very much time consuming okay so let's just start the tetanus toxin so like the other ab subunit system the tetanus toxin has two subunit one is a subunit and another one is the b subunit the a subunit is also called the light chain which have the catalytic or the antigenic activity or the pathogenic activity and the b subunit has been has uh, is also called the uh, heavy chain which has again two parts and this a subunit and b subunit or light chain or heavy chain is actually uh, actually connected to each other by disulfide bonds by disulfide bonds whenever this b subunit binds to any receptor like gd2 or gd1b like the acyloganglioside the the entire uh, the entire receptor and exotoxin complex is then internalized and by a mechanism of by mechanism of retrograde transport transport this antigen i mean the receptor a receptor exotoxin complex is transported from the exon into the uh, postsynaptic membrane and from the postsynaptic membrane by transcellulosis process it go to the p-synaptic membrane or the synaptic membrane of synops forming p-synaptic neuron okay so then it's exerted its mechanism first let me tell you the normal physiology of this synapse of neuromuscular junction okay so let's suppose this is a muscle okay let me make it in a different color okay let's suppose this is the muscle okay and this is the neuron who is acting on this muscle and in the spinal cord there are excitatory and inhibitory interneuron who is uh, exciting 
and inhibiting the function of this neuron respectively okay so this one is the excitatory neuron and this one is the inhibitory neuron so what this excitatory neuron does whenever any action potential comes it secretes some excitatory neurotransmitter inside the uh, I mean uh, in the synaptic left which causes the excitation of this neuron and this neuron fires which causes the muscle to contract on the other hand whenever inhibitory neuron fires it causes this muscle to get relaxed and when both neuron fire the neuron which take up our hand uh, will cause the function but in case of tetanus toxin it will block the uh, inhibitory neuron by which mechanism by the mechanism that it will cause the vesicle flow with the GABA uh, I mean the gamma aminobutyric acid and glycine the inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter released from the inhibitory neuron uh, will be blocked it will cause the vesicles to prevent uh, not to get attached with the presynaptic membrane and releases material into the synaptic plate by excitatory process because it causes the cleavage of PAMP or like synaptobivinous syntapsin which will cause inhibition of exocytosis so that is how the mechanism is exerted so let me repeat it first there is B subgenic binds to the receptor and internalization occurs which causes the entire exotoxin receptor complex exotoxin receptor complex to go into the uh, neuronal transport system uh, retroneural transport system and from transcytosis from the postsynaptic membrane to the presynaptic membrane after it go to the presynaptic membrane the endosome has the VATPS pump or proton pump which causes the acidification of the endosome and which causes the disulfide bond between the alpha and, um, I, mean, I mean the A or B chain or the heavy and light chain broken and the a say a say now comes out into the cytoplasm of the or the neuroplasm of the presynaptic membrane now this a subunit will cause breaking down of uh, synaptobivin or VAM, neurotransmitter containing vesicle preventing its exocytosis and there is inhibition of release of transmit uh, i mean the inhibitory neurotransmitter like gamma inhibitoric acid and glycine which will cause prevention of uh, inhibitor neuron to fire and ultimately the titanic spasm or titanus spastic paralysis develops so this is the same mechanism shown here uh, actually i'm getting bored so i'm skipping it now botulinum toxin actually botulinum toxin uh, act by the same way but in case of botulinum toxin it inhibit the uh, in exocytosis of the Vesicle containing the acetylcholine or excitatory neurotransmitter in the excitatory interneuron, thus blocking the function of or action of the excitatory interneuron. And that is how the botulinum toxin causes relaxation of the muscle and facet paralysis develops. So, this is actually the botulinum toxin mechanism how it is inhibiting the acetylcholine to release. This is the same thing how it is cleaving the synaptobinous syntax in our hemp uh, and inhibiting the exothyrogic process. Mm, this is actually the comparison between these two mechanisms. The first one is the tetanus, the upper one is actually the mechanism of tetanus toxin, and the lower one is actually the botulinum toxin. The same way, they act in the same way, except the fact that the inhibitor in neurosynthesis is blocked in case of vegetinus and excitatory neurotransmitter is blocked in case of botulism okay now the third mechanism by who is the ap sub unit acts is uh, the membrane disrupting toxin okay now this membrane disrupting toxin causes the loss of integrity of the plasma membrane thus destruction of the cell and there are two types of cell membrane disrupting toxins the first one which causes the cholesterol to use as a receptor or channel then enters inside the uh, i mean the cell of the cell of the host or the host cells 
create some pore or become leaky due to the formation of channel by this type of exotoxin and there is entrance of odor and other osmotic uh, osmotic particles inside the cell which causes osmotic swelling and ultimately rises occurs of the cell and subsequently death alpha toxin of staphyloceus act by this way and the second type is membrane damaging toxin consists of phospholipase c or lecithinase or sphingomyelinase like alpha toxin of clostridium perfringens this causes the hydrolysis of phosphoryl choline of the cell membrane and thus destabilization of the cell membrane and cell death occurs now the last mechanism by which the exotoxin acts is the super antigen system okay now super antigen is actually a special type of bacterial protein that generate a powerful immune response by binding non specifically to major histamine compatibility complex to uh, molecules and on the antigen presenting cell and t receptors on the t cell and this activation of t cells trigger release of some uh, cytokines like interleukin 1 interleukin 2 interleukin 6 and interferon gamma and first there is actually excess production of interferon gamma uh, which in turn activate the macrophage and then macrophage uh, macrophage uh, over produce or produce the pro inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 1 6 and uh, tmnetosis factor alpha and this is actually cause the systemic effect like shock multiple organ failure this kind of effect so this is actually the super antigen system this is actually the super antigen which is binding with the t cell receptor as well as major histamine histo compatibility complex 2 which is activating the macrophage and release of cytokines occurs so it causes the systemic effect now these are some important uh, exotoxins which is uh, act by the super antigen system like toxic shock syndrome toxin then enterotoxin of staphylococcus aureus then staphylococcus enterotoxin then erythrogenic toxin uh, pyrogenic exotoxin a this kind of thing and this is the same thing some example i'm skipping it it is taken from the lens review now we have discussed up to now we have discussed about the exotoxin and its mechanism now we will discuss about the endotoxin and the mechanism of action and how it is secreted from the cell so what is endotoxin endotoxin in contrast to exotoxin is actually lipopolysaccharide whereas the exotoxin was uh, lipid in nature and endotoxin or ac toxin is actually the integral part of the cell membrane okay so it is liberated whenever the bacteria disintegrated or lysed and it is encoded by bacterial chromosome in contrast to the exo in exotoxin which is encoded by the plasmid and the bacteriophage so what are the properties of it produced by gram negative bacteria only in contrast to exotoxin which is produced by both gram positive and gram negative bacteria in contrast to exotoxin which was lip uh, protein in nature or peptide in nature the endotoxin is actually lipoprotein in nature and these are in integral part of the cell membrane and coding genes are on the bacterial chromosome its toxicity is actually kind of low from the exotoxin because the toxin is very fragile and they are weakly antigenic and poorly induced protective antibodies and no toxin have been produced from the endotoxin and they are heat stable and exotoxin produces same generalized effect Uh, of fever shock and all those severity may differ do you know the parts of exotoxin uh, i mean endotoxin the endotoxin have actually three parts one is the lipid a and polysaccharide core and there is a somatic or o antigen actually the toxic portion of endotoxin is uh, the lipid a portion so whatever effect is caused is done by the lipid a portion of the endotoxin so how is secreted it is secreted by the lysis of the the lysis of the cell membrane uh, or the uh, disintegration of the bacterial cell membrane you can see here okay these are some bacteria which produced endotoxin 
like gram negative coca initial age species and other gram negative plots i'm skipping it now mechanism of action of endotoxin now endotoxin actually acts by three mechanism by activating three system in our body the first one is they activate macrophage which in turn activates some uh, uh, pro-inflammatory mediators like interleukin, T1 necrosis factor, nitric oxide which exerts effect on our body second one is they activate the complement system by the alternative pathway and the third one is they activate tissue factor or factor 3 which causes the DIC now I will discuss one by one the details of it first one is the activation of macrophage so what are the active, uh, effects of activation of macrophage when the when exotoxin is released from the gram negative bacteria in small pieces of outer membrane they bind to lipopolysaccharide binding protein in the plasma and this complex binds to a receptor on the T cell which is uh, receptor on the surface of the macrophage which is called uh, CD14 or the tall like receptor 4 and a signal cascade within the macrophage is then activated resulting in synthesis of cytokines such as interleukin 1, tumor necrosis factor and nitric oxide and what this interleukin causes is that you know that interleukin 1 is the major uh, cytokines for inducing fever so interleukin 1 along with interleukin 6 uh, leads to production of prostaglandin E2 in the hypothalamus which causes the temperature regulatory center in the hypothalamus to get set as a slightly higher level which induces the increased temperature of the body or fever and the tumor necrosis factor and nitric oxide which is produced by the macrophage along with bradykinin and histamine are produced by the mast cells and basophil act on the blood vessel so what they do is they dilate the vessel and the vessel becomes leaky or permeable so due to leaking of fluid from the vessel outside on the edema occur as well as the vessel due to vessel dilation and leaking of fluid outside of the vessel there is hypotension so if the hypotension persists for a long time it may lead to multi-organ failure and you know the tumor necrosis factor have some beneficial effect uh, as well on the uh, inflammatory process like the cause vasodilation, increased vascular permeability, then adhesion of the molecules during act, uh, acute inflammation, then enhanced microbicidal activity of the neutrophils, activation of adhesion platelets, and increased expression of class 1 and MAC to class 1 and class 2 MAC or major histocomatolytic uh, complex proteins. So these are the beneficial effects of the tumor necrosis factor. You know the second thing uh, which endotoxin activates is actually the complement system, complement system or complement proteins it actually activate the complement uh, system by alternative pathway and the c3a uh, c3a from it call activation causes activation of basophil and mast cell and basophil and mast cell then produce the histamine and histamine you know the same effect the vasodilation as well as the increased vascular permeability leading to hypertension and edema hypertension and edema the c5a component of the complement system is actually act as a chemokine which attracts the neutrophil at the site of infection and ultimately lead to inflammation now the third thing which is activated by the endotoxin is actually the tissue factor the tissue factor or the factor 3 now this factor 3 by the extensive uh, coagulation pathway or the coagulation cascade activate the fibrin which causes the widespread formation of clot and due to destruction of the or uh, using of the clotting factor there is uh, you know the deficiency of clotting factor inside the blood leading to bleeding tendency so combined effect of this clot formation as well as this bleeding tendency leads to the disseminated intravascular coagulation or in abbreviated form it is termed as DIC okay so this three mechanism causes five biologic effects. First one is fever by interleukin 1, then hypotension, which is caused by some tumor necrosis factor, nitric oxide, histamine, bradykinin, then DIC formation by tissue factor, then inflammation occurred by the uh, by the tumor necrosis factor and other other uh, leukotrienes, sorry, the interleukins uh, released by the macrophage. And whenever the macrophage get activated, it causes the 
phagocytic phagocytosis as well as the activation of b cell uh, which leads to production of antibody the indication of this five biologic process actually leads to a response termed as systemic inflammatory response syndrome which is characterized by fever hypotension tachycardia tachycardia and leukocytosis now some interesting facts is that the dic can be detected by a test which is called d dimer laboratory test d dimer are actually the cleavage products of fibrin and you know the fibrin it into the blood the fibrin fibrin can be detected in the blood and if this fibrin can be detected in the blood it is thought that the patient have dic and you know that dic is a very critical condition in fact there is no specific treatment for dic so dic is confirm if any patient suffer with the dic now endotoxin i told you that uh, it it is solely secreted from the gram negative bacteria but there are some substances in the gram positive bacteria as well which have some functions like or effects like the exotox endotoxin like the staphylococcus and streptococcus parasitic infection who is uh, whose lipoticoic acid causes the same effect uh, by releasing the t1 necrosis factor and interleukin 1 by macrophages like the endotoxin so this is actually the difference of our comparison between exotoxin and endotoxin i don't think that i have to tell it you have already know it and it is taken from the lens review 16 edition so thank you so much for watching hope you have learned something and enjoyed and actually i'm sorry for the sound system actually i'm recording the video outside of my house actually on the rooftop of my house and there is so much disturbing noise as well as you know the environment environment is kind of kind of noisy so forgive me for that okay thank you thank for thanks for